So today we're going to do things a little different again, and I'm going to talk into this microphone because, well, it's kind of fun. And I want to break down dynamic mode decomposition for you and its motivation. So we've been talking about all sorts of high-level algorithms that use reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces, densely defined operators, and all of this really complicated language, but I've never really given you a sort of low-level or, well, high-level explanation of what DMD is. So in this video, I'm going to try to take a break from all of the very theoretical stuff that we've been talking about and just talk to you qualitatively about what we're trying to do with dynamic mode decomposition and what the general goals are. And then this will serve as a, a nice introductory lecture on DMD and the Koopman operator. So if you want to learn more about DMD, please go check out the other videos on my channel and stick around and subscribe. And uh, otherwise, let's go ahead and jump into it. Dynamic mode decomposition. What exactly is that? I have made a lot of videos talking about algorithms for doing dynamic mode decomposition. I made one where we took a look at kernel DMD and we showed that it was a very, very simple algorithm to get sort of approximations of supposed eigenfunctions for the Koopman operator. And we used these eigenfunctions in order to break down the full state observable, and then in turn we used that decomposition into breaking down the original signal that we started with. But why? Why would we do this? What does this give us? And is this any better than other methods? So why don't we start with another method, and that is the Fourier transform. The classical way of approaching any sort of signal processing is to take a time series or a signal, and we want to break it down into its Fourier components. The Fourier components are all sinusoids. So we basically think that if we take higher and higher frequency sinusoids, we should be able to reconstruct pretty much any function that we deal with. And this is largely correct. A Fourier transform uses an inner product and it takes the original signal and it takes the inner product against each one of these basis functions, which form an orthonormal set. This orthonormality allows us to cleanly break apart the signal into each of its components and we can later use all of these inner products in order to recombine the original signal. And so now we have the signal is represented as a whole bunch of sinusoids and the ones that have the largest amplitude are the ones that make the largest contribution. So if we want, we can maybe optimize or maybe even get rid of noise by removing components that don't seem to have very much of a contribution. So maybe the high frequency noise in a signal would have very, very low amplitude, or even if it did have high amplitude, this still allows us to chop it off if we know it isn't really important. And so the Fourier transform is a decomposition method, and there's other decomposition methods for data. So for instance, we can use the PCA, where if you take a whole bunch of data points and you arrange them in matrix, and you determine the PCA, of that matrix, the principal component analysis, then what you get is a collection of components that have associated eigenvalues. And those eigenvalues tell you how important each one of our components are. So the component corresponding to the largest eigenvalue is gonna be the main descriptor of all your data. And in a lot of cases for data analysis, you only need say, you know, the first 10 or 20 out of maybe a thousand principal components in order to describe any of your data points. And so the PCA is really nice because it's a data-driven basis that you're getting for your data. So you can use the information you learn from your data in order to make your data back again and possibly even optimize it. This is great if you're trying to do some sort of storage of a large collection of data and you no longer need to use the actual raw data you get every single time, but you can just project your data onto these principal components and just store the values of that projection and you don't even have to store much of the data at all. 
we have two examples here then. We have the general purpose sinusoids for Fourier analysis that serve to represent our data. And then we have the data-driven method from the PCA. But that was for just sort of any data set. Uh, the Fourier transform added the idea that we have continuous functions. And so we used that assumption in order to get guarantees that our Fourier transform is actually going to converge. And the PCA is maybe a lot more general, but it doesn't make any assumptions about the data itself. And while you might think that's going to be a really good thing, if we have a situation where the data has more structure, we'd like to have some way of actually approaching the analysis of that data and, and breakdown. And so there should be better ways of analyzing particular data sets that have additional structure than maybe just continuity or just being a data point. This is what dynamic mode decomposition does. Dynamic mode decomposition assumes that the data is dynamic. And if it's dynamic, that means it obeys either a discrete time dynamical system or it obeys a differential equation. And there is some underlying dynamics governing the motion of our data points. And so then using this, we'd like to be able to come up with a better way of analyzing our data and getting a better custom data set, just like the PCA, and maybe a little bit also like the Fourier transform is sort of the perfect blend between the two. Now, not every time series is going to be dynamic. If you take a look at, say, a sine of x, and you just try to treat it as a first order dynamical system, you're going to fall flat on your face. There are ways to get around this. If you include the derivative of sine into your data, so if you take the derivative of your time points and then you augment your state variable, that is actually a single dimensional system. And we talked about that in the last uh, Koopmanism is wrong video. And there are actually other ways of handling it that my colleagues are working on, but uh, I'll tell you about that later. So if you know anything about dynamic mode decomposition or you've seen my videos, then you know that operators come in here somewhere. But what do they have to do with this whole signal processing approach to time series? It's dynamic mode decomposition. Why do we want operators? It seems like a very complicated thing to do to analyze a time series. Well, the answer starts with linear systems. So remember that we have a collection of snapshots from a time series, we'll assume that we have a discrete time dynamical system. And so if we have something like a linear system, where we go from one snapshot to the next by multiplying by a matrix, then what we can see is that if we take an eigen decomposition of our matrix, then we can represent each of our snapshots of our time series as a collection of eigenvectors and eigenvalues and as a sum of eigenvectors and eigenvalues where we move from one state to the next by multiplying by the eigenvalues again. So ultimately, every linear system can be represented through a sum of exponentials. And we'd like to do this for nonlinear systems too. And most of the systems we're going to run into are nonlinear. And so we'd like to be able to come up with some way of doing this. And that's what DMD does. Now, the DMD algorithm itself, you can watch my videos on that. And in those videos, I also talk about some of what I'm going to talk about here. And we're going to talk about the Koopman operator. So again, we're assuming our system is discrete time. And if we do have a discrete time system, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it through the guise of what are called observables. Observables are members of a Hilbert space of functions. And we're going to assume that this Hilbert space of functions is a reproducing kernel Hilbert space. We want to make sure that function evaluation is well-defined, and that's what this does. So the Koopman operator on the space of observables is the operator that takes our dynamics and it puts it inside of an observable. If we take a look at the Koopman operator acting on an observable G, then the result is G composed with our discrete time dynamics, which for the moment are unknown. But DMD tries to find a way of discovering them through an approximation of this operator. But we'll talk about that later. So assuming that we know what our dynamics are, then if we take a snapshot, say our initial snapshot x0, 
and we throw it into the Koopman operator applied to our observable. What we're going to have is we're going to have G composed with F composed with X0. And F composed with X0 is X1. And so then that just means that the Koopman operator applied to our observable evaluated at X0 is our observable at X1. And if you apply the Koopman operator twice and then evaluate at X0, then that's going to give you the observable evaluated at X2 and etc. And so we can see that iterations of the Koopman operator acting on our observables can advance our discrete time system inside of the observable itself. And now we want to look at a very special collection of observables, and those are our eigenfunctions of the Koopman operator. And here we are assuming that the Koopman operator is diagonalizable. What happens if we take a look at an eigenfunction of the Koopman operator and we evaluate it at xi? Well, we know that is the same as taking our eigenfunction and evaluating that at the discrete time dynamics evaluated at xi minus one. And so this is actually the Koopman operator applied to our eigenfunction evaluated at xi minus one. And since it's an eigenfunction for that operator, ultimately what we get is we get that this is equal to lambda times the eigenfunction evaluated at xi minus one. And we can iterate this and see that the eigenfunction evaluated at xi is simply equal to lambda to the i times eigenfunction evaluated at x naught. The final step in getting to our representation of our time series through this Koopman operator comes by taking a look at a special observable called the full state observable. This is the observable where if you put x in there, you get x back. And so it's just the identity function. And if I take a look at the eigen decomposition of the full state observable, what I get are a collection of vector valued weights called Koopman modes, and I have my eigenfunctions. If I put in xi into our full state observable, then look at this projection that we did onto this eigenbasis. What we end up getting is we have a series of these Koopman modes times these eigenfunctions evaluated at xi. But we can change all the eigenfunctions evaluated at xi to their respective eigenvalues raised to the ith power times the eigenfunctions evaluated at x0. And ta-da, we now have a series of exponential functions representing our state from our nonlinear dynamical system. And so where we had, for linear systems, we had a sum of exponentials. For our nonlinear dynamical system, we end up getting a series of exponentials. And that is the core idea to all of dynamic mode decomposition. We want to find out what these Koopman modes are, or Liouville modes in the case of continuous time systems. And we want to decompose our signal in this way, because this way leverages the idea that our states are dynamic. And this allows us to take full advantage of that idea to get a possibly better representation of our data through this operator. Now again, our dynamics are unknown. We don't have access to the Koopman operator itself. And so DMD tries to get an approximation of this operator through finite rank representations. And it uses the snapshots of our system and it constructs a matrix that can be decomposed and leads to approximate eigenfunctions inside of our space. And if you want to see more of how to do that, then go check out my videos. I have one on the Koopman operator, which is made for doing discrete time dynamical systems. And I also have one for the Liouville operator, which is better tuned for continuous time systems. I also have a whole collection of different approaches to dynamic mode decomposition that I'm going to speak on. Some are mine and some are my colleagues and some are just out there in the field that are just interesting to talk about. And if you'd like to learn more, please subscribe, like, and comment on this video. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.